Facebook, that friendly social media app that was supposed to bring us all closer together, but unfortunately only made us feel more isolated as the American Journal of Preventative Medicine discovered people who spend more than two hours a day on social media reported twice the amount of social isolation than those who spent a half hour per day or less on social media. Facebook, the same app that tracks us relentlessly, watching everything we do online, sells our personal information, our private messages. Essentially, they sell everything we are. In fact, Facebook wants to control the very currency that you are worth. And Facebook's creator sits on a mountain of gold, closing in on a net worth of $100 billion, defending his pile of trinkets from the socialist democratic horde that he unwittingly supported. And now, after all of the censorship of freedom-loving Americans from Zuckerberg's Silicon Valley ivory tower, he has the gall to lecture us about free expression, hoping that he can turn the tide on the growing call to break up his company. But those of us that have always stood with freedom can only laugh at Zuckerberg's shallow pleas. And I understand the concerns uh, that people have about how tech platforms have, have centralized power. But I actually believe that the much bigger story is how much these platforms have decentralized power by putting it directly into people's hands. It's, it's part of this amazing expansion of voice that we've experienced through law and culture and now technology as well. We are at another crossroads. We can either continue to stand for free expression, understanding its messiness, but believing that the long journey towards greater progress requires confronting ideas that challenge us. Or we can decide that the cost is simply too great. And I'm here today because I believe that we must continue to stand for free expression. Hubris aside, Facebook is so flawed that it has racked up a growing kill count attributed to the activity of its users. Just yesterday in Bangladesh, as the Washington Times reported, at least four people were killed and dozens injured after security officials in southern Bangladesh opened fire to disperse hundreds of Muslims during a protest over an alleged social media post undermining Islam's Prophet Muhammad, police said. When angry protesters demanded the punishment of a Hindu man for the alleged Facebook comment, the man denied making the comment, saying his Facebook account had been hacked. You are CEO and, and chairman of Facebook. Um, that's an extraordinary amount of power, given that you rule a kingdom of two billion people digitally, essentially. Um, shouldn't your power be checked? You know, I, I always talk about how we need to partner with governments around the world um, and other companies and, and nonprofits and, and, and other sectors. Um, so yes, I, I don't think fundamentally that we're going to be able to address all of these issues by ourselves. So you are not stepping down as chairman? That's not the plan. Anyone who really takes the time to sit back and take in the threat that Facebook poses to our republic would immediately delete their Facebook account. But even Facebook makes that incredibly difficult to do. John Bound reporting.